Now, over the last two videos, we've been talking about mutations in terms of their structural types. And we compare chromosome mutations versus gene mutations. Chromosome mutations, of course, are mutations that change the structure of the chromosome, such as duplication, inversion, deletion, translocation, and non-disjunction, which we have a separate video about that as well. Then we talked about gene mutations, which change the sequence of the DNA of a single gene. So while chromosome mutations affect many genes, gene mutations only affect one gene. Insertions or deletions, which leads to problems like Cri du Chat, which leads to frame shift, remember, because of that insertion and deletion. Also, repeat extensions will do the same thing. We also talked about substitutions, which are point mutations, which change a single gene, but sometimes it's enough to change the code. And we talked about that when we did the sickle cell disease. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about genetic types, evolutionary types, and cell types of mutations. So let's talk about that. So, in terms of genetic types, there's actually three main types of mutations. You can have missense, nonsense, or silent mutations. So let's explain that. Here you see the missense mutation. I mean, a missense mutation will happen when a change happens in the code. For example, here you see a substitution happening, which changes a single amino acid or a few amino acids in Although it changes a little bit, it still makes a protein. It will make, make it a wrong protein, but you still make the protein. Sickle cell disease is an example of that. So you still make a protein product. It's, not just, it's just not the same protein product that you would have made without this mutation. So it's a missense mutation. Kind of like that sentence we talk about the we rat changing to we bat because of a single point substitution mutation. Now... A nonsense mutation will happen because of a change that actually changes so much that either it leads to the protein not being built, not being not start, and prematurely, or change so much because of a frame shift that actually makes the protein not be capable to do its job at all. So frame shift mutations, mutations that cause the protein to stop earlier, or mutations that cause the protein to not even start will be called nonsense mutations. And you see an example of a substitution leading to a nonsense mutation because you ended up changing the code to send a message to stop the protein in this example. And then you have silent mutations. We talked a little bit about that on the gene mutations video. Sometimes because of the redundancy in the DNA code, so for example, you see that here, that both AAC and AAG both stand for the same amino acid phenotelin so that means it won't change the protein just because you have this mutation and therefore it's a silent mutation it doesn't actually change the genetic code also sometimes you get these mutations because certain pieces of DNA do not get copied to protein DNA has a lot of stuff inside of it that's not coding for proteins we call that non-coding DNA examples of this are pieces called introns when we do protein synthesis we're going to talk about the importance of those introns and why they're there if they don't have a protein coding process, why are they in the middle of the genetic code? We, there's also other DNA that's not in, not in trans. We have regulation sequences, structural DNA sequences, repetitive DNA sequences, uh, leftover DNA sequences, inactivated DNA sequences. All of this DNA is not related to DNA products. And because they're, they're not related to proteins, if a mutation happens in this DNA, it will not affect any protein. And so even if you have a mutation there, you might even know you have it. It will be a silent mutation. So because of these things, sometimes you don't see it. Now, another thing too, remember, there's also the whole thing about dominant versus recessive. Let's say, for example, that I have two copies of each chromosome. Here's another reason why sexual reproduction protects you and good, it's good for variation. If, let's say, this B gene here is, is bad, and if you have it, you die. Well, you're not dying because you have a dominant gene as well, so that protects you from that bad trait there. So because we have a pair of a homolog from mom and a homolog from dad, which may have different alleles or different versions of the same gene, even if I have a bad gene, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get expressed. When we talk about sickle cell anemia, I talked about if you have a big S and a little S, the big S will protect you from actually having the disease and it will actually have an advantage because you'll be protected from malaria, all right, because of the little S. will make an intermediate look. And so you see that uh, there are three reasons why sometimes you're going to have silent mutations because of the redundancy of the genetic code, because some of the, the genetic code it does not code for proteins, and so it doesn't matter if you get mutated there, and because of the actual fact that we have 
are diploid, so diploid also protects us from mutations. Now, in terms of cell types, there are two main places that a mutation can happen. Mutations can happen in somatic cells or germ cells. If it happens in a somatic cell, of course, only the person that had it is going to be affected. Remember, somatic cell is a cell of your body. It's not going to be passed on to your child because this is not a cell that makes a gamete. Only germ cells make gametes. So if I have a mutation right here in the middle of my hand, it's not going to affect anything about my child. So if I have skin cancer, my child doesn't necessarily get that skin cancer unless, of course, I have the gene for skin cancer and I pass that on to my child. Or if the mutation happens in the germ cell and then, then it gets passed on to the child. Which means somatic mutations occur in normal body cells. They're not inheritable. They cause cancers like things like cancer and tumors, benign or malign, uh, because of these mutations. Remember, though, that your immune system usually kills most of these mutant cells. Now, germline mutations happens when the mutation happens to occur during the formation of a germ cell, either the oogonium or spermatogonium, or any of the primary, secondary, or final products of meiosis during gametogenesis. If a mutation happens there, a deletion, a translocation, an inversion, an insertion, whatever happens, either a chromosomal or a gene mutation, if it happens in a germline mutation, anything between oogonium and gamete that is going to end up if that gamete happens to be the one that wins getting back passed on to the offspring an example of course is down syndrome and all of the other recessive traits that we talked about uh, and these are heritable and can cause f f things like all the genetic disorders we talked about as well as other ones we haven't even talked about and cancer that is inheritable um, across generations so you see this example of somatic versus germline limitation one more thing Evolution is caused by germline mutations. Of course, if you have a change in one of your cells, that doesn't get passed on to the offspring. Only changes in your gamete cells, which you don't even notice, by the way. It doesn't affect you because those cells are nothing for you. They're just the cells that you do send your genes forward, basically. So they don't affect you as an organism. They will affect your child. So only changes that are affect the germ cells will cause evolution. All right, And that's a very important as well. Okay, now in terms of evolution, since we're talking about it, there's two types of mutation. You have neutral, deleterious, or beneficial mutations. Now, neutral mutations are mutations that make absolutely no difference. In other words, if you have A or B, that doesn't make you more or less likely to survive. Remember, the concept of natural selection is the idea that animals which have better traits or are better adapted or have a better package of traits are going to be more likely to live longer, make more offspring, that then goes forth and makes more offspring as well. Make them have a liar fitness. Okay? So, for example, if you are a white moss in a black area, you're going to be eaten more. But if you are a black moss in a white area, you're going to be eaten more. And so that leads to natural selection and over a period of many generations leads to changes in the genome or the, of the, or the genetic composition of a population, which is basically what evolution is. Now, this is only going to happen, natural selection is only going to happen if the trait is causing a difference. Let's say, for example, I don't know if, it, if that's the case, but let's say, for example, a trait in humans, attach earlobe. If that makes absolutely no difference into whether or not you're going to survive longer, right-handed versus right, left-handed, if there's truly no difference between one or the other, then there's no natural advantage to either or disadvantage. That means, though, that's called a neutral evolutionary mutation. Now, if there is an advantage, say, for example, if you're born with higher intelligence or higher speed or higher strength, and in the particular environment where you are, that happens to be a good thing. Remember, in a different environment, that might be a bad thing, right? So there are no such thing as bad genes. There's only genes mismatched for their environments. But if, if it is mismatched and it's a bad adaptation, that's not an adaptation at all. We call that a problem, a deleterious mutation, a mutation that's going to cause you to be least likely to survive and therefore probably die and become less common in population. However, if you have a beneficial mutation, say, for example, having darker coloration in a darker region, it will have to protect you, camouflage yourself, and that's going to be beneficial mutation. Okay? So, those are different kinds of mutations in terms of genetics, somatics, versus germlines or evolutionary types of mutations. So we talk about nissense, nonsense, or cell mutations, and those are the things that change a little bit, everything, or not at all, the protein. 
Somatic versus germ cells. Somatics affects you. Germ cells affect your offspring. Germ cells is what evolution is all about. Somatic cells is what cancer is all about, although germ cells can cause inheritable cancers. Evolutionary types, neutrons don't make a difference. Deleterious makes you worse likely or least likely to survive. And beneficial makes you more likely to survive. Those are types of mutations in terms of those criteria. On our next and last video about mutations, we're going to talk about causes for mutations and how to avoid them. See you guys then.